We are now live. Do you want me to put this on? Oh, you don't have to. You have a couple minutes. We have a couple minutes. You don't put it on? No, you don't. You can if you want, but we're going to take a couple minutes. Oh, okay, just so I can hear the whatever commercial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And where it plugs in there, there's mm -hmm. a couple knobs. Oh, so and you turn it down? your volume, yeah. So. Yeah, because it was a little loud. Yeah, <laughs> it'll get a little louder on the show, too. Okay, five and a half minutes away from air. Let's check the mics. Okay. Yeah, so the rates they're gonna go up today. I think. Yeah. But still, actually, not bad. I think it's good for our car. I think it is too. Yeah. They've been too low for too long. So. All right, Jared. Check, check. Check it. Check right now. Check. A little louder, a little closer. Check. Is that Check. better? Is that good? Okay. Yep. Okay, so. So, how long is it in? Then you have a break, and then how does so it it's, work? It's, yeah, exactly. We'll talk. We'll go for probably. <clears throat> this first one's maybe seven, eight minutes long, and then we go for a break. How long is the breaks? A minute. We wanted to have half hours, like two minutes long. So otherwise, yeah. it might have been long. And there's four of those, four sessions. So break after the first, and then a half hour break, and then a break at the three quarter hour, and then we'll be done. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. So there's time in the break. We'll get more water if you want. Yeah. Probably not enough to go to the bathroom. Definitely not enough. Yeah. Feel. <coughs> Learn all that. So how long ago were you on QVC? Ooh. That was back two thousand and three or so. How did it work out for you? Was it went well. We're now with H uh, HSN, which they all own. Okay. UBC HSN is all owned by one big right. company right now, right. and uh, uh, the other brand we'll call it does QVC. We do HSN, so we kind of have our own built-in business that's really good. I mean, our our business with them is is growing, and we've doubled every year. Really. Yeah, That's great. It's, yeah. So do you I mean, run constant, not constant, frequent? Um, it, when it comes to our season, you know, because we're a fall brand. Yes. We have we have constant uh, events. Like it'll stock. St I think we start in October, and then we go all the way to January on the events, and then on spring they they dabble in some of our spring product we have. But you know, our largest customers are Famous Footwear, uh, Macy's. <coughs> Dick Sporting Goods, uh, of course, HSN, Amazon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the whole internet world has really changed our industry. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and that, uh, that, that's actually been a blessing for our, our brand, the internet business, because uh, um, you know, I'll tell the story when I'm on air about how I got into Zappos. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's, it's very interesting, you know, uh, way back when, and how I got into Amazon. Those were my some of my first two customers years ago. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was just, just me and another rep, and that was it. And uh, how we got in there was was very interesting, and how we, you know, didn't... Zappos has, uh, is owned by Amazon. They, oh, okay. Amazon bought them, okay. and Zappos that. has many different arms. They have the Zappos arm, they have the 6 p.m. arm, and we sell on both. We're, we've been with them quite a while. Um, and uh, the internet is just taking over. I mean, I always tell everybody that the, the toughest thing right now in retail, brick and mortar and internet, is the happy medium. Yeah. Trying to find the balance sure. between yeah. um, you know, your internet and your brick and mortar. Yeah. And the ones that are succeeding, like Famous Footwear, is doing an, an amazing job. DSW, amazing job. Because those two, I want to say brands, those two imprints, whatever. But they, no, they're brands. They're brand. yeah. Those two, they have both. So well, they they have they have both. internet presence. Yeah, yeah, Amazon only has the internet. Zappos only has sure. internet. But, you know, but almost every big Macy's Macy's has an amazing internet site. Yeah. So a lot of the brands, uh, retailers, we'll call them retail brands, they they got into that internet world, 
and it's it's some have done great, some yeah. haven't done yeah. that well. Yeah. It's it's those who's embraced it and then figured out how to interact their customer with the internet. Yeah, huge. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. It's, it's 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 a game changer in our industry. Yeah, and it's just, that's things that you just learn over time. Did you guys ever experiment with retail? Yeah, we, 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 we still have uh, um, we have a store in Reno, and then we're, we have a store in, in um, uh, S- uh, Sacramento, and then Flip Flop Chops Retail, of course. Okay. Um, it's not the easiest thing. Our, yeah. our best part of our retail is our internet, bearpot.com. <laughs> that is extremely successful right, right. and very profitable. <clears throat> yeah. That's probably one of our largest profit centers. Hmm. And we make the shoes. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Numbers on Monday, 1055. I'm Mark Bellows, your host of this weekly business talk show. I'm a, uh, also a t- my day job is a tax uh, account, a CPA with Clifton Larson Allen. And we are at, I'm in the Roseville office, CLA's offices throughout the United States, and work with uh, many small to medium to large sized businesses, but no public ones, all private companies. And, uh, and we also uh, uh, have a number of industry specializations, and in my case, my specialization is more in the manufacturing and distribution industry. We run that practice here in the Sacramento area. And I work with businesses, their owners, um, planning strategy, that sort of thing. And, uh, and then I host this show, and I get the interesting, fascinating business people on the show, and this week is no different. Uh, anyway, if you want to get a hold of me, 916-784-7800 is my number at work, or it's mark.bellows at claconnect.com. And today, as my guest, I've got Tom Romeo, the CEO and founder of Bear Paw Shoes. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing, Mark? Good. How about yourself? I'm great. Good, good. Thanks for coming on the show. So, uh, Bear Paw, maybe for those who are not familiar with it, and by the way, extremely successful Sacramento-based company. We'll get into that a little bit. Extremely successful. But I think a lot of people maybe have it, didn't know it was actually here in Sacramento. But tell us a little bit about what Bear Paw is and does. Uh, Bear Paw uh, Shoes, we've been around since uh, 2001. Uh, we make sheepskin footwear and wool footwear, um, slippers, boots, uh, sandals, any footwear design we do. Okay. Very okay. So you started the company. We'll get into the, found, the founding a little bit early, a little bit later. But you started at this company, particular Bear Posh, was in two thousand one. Then you guys recently did an acquisition. Yes. What would what, what, you acquire? Uh, we purchased uh, Flip Flop Shops. Um, it's a sixty store chain of. Um, flip-flop uh, inspired uh, products. Okay, and so the combination of all that gives you guys sales in the range of 150 to 175 million a year. That's correct. So again, very successful company, great uh, great story here in Sacramento. Uh, and you've been at the helm since the beginning. Maybe take us back to the beginning. When did, when you, because before 2001, you were... Uh, I've been in the shoe industry since 1986. Okay. Um, Bearpaw came into existence in 2001. But the parent company is Romeo and Juliet Inc., and that's been since 1986. Okay. And I started off as a sales rep. I worked for LA Gear, um, helped start Rydell Footwear, um, also started our own brand of athletic shoes called Addicts. Uh, my beginning was more in the athletic realm, mm-hmm. and um, in 2001, I, I was fortunate enough uh, on the manufacturing side when I would go over to China. I was introduced to a factory that actually made our athletic shoes and um, asked me if I could sell sheepskin footwear. So were they making sheepskin footwear at that time? Uh, This factory did both athletic and sheepskin. 
and um, they asked me, hey, do you think you could sell some of this product? And I was like, well, okay, uh, let me see what I can do. And uh, they said, well, we have 50,000 pairs sitting there in China that need a home and need a name, and uh, can you do something? And I was like, okay, give me some samples. I'll uh, go back to the U.S. and see what I can do. Uh, this was in 2001. Uh, I brought them back. Um, I called my friends at Big Five Sporting Goods. Uh, since I've been doing the athletic side of yeah, it, I had a, yeah. I had a pretty, pretty strong connection there. Uh, I showed them the product and I said, uh, you know, is there any interest for sheepskin slippers and boots? Um, and they looked at the product and they said, uh, yeah, uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, what are you going to call them? I don't know. What are you going to sell them for? Uh, well, don't know yet. Don't know. Yeah. And uh, I said, but you know, this is Thursday. I'll, I'll tell you Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so over the weekend, I busy weekend. Yeah, busy weekend. Um, I came up with the name Bear Paw. Uh, I have a good friend named Robert Morningsky, uh, who uh, is half uh, uh, um, Apache and Hopi, Hopi Indian. Uh -huh. And um, he, I, I, I called him up over the weekend and I go, hey, um, do you have any names? And he's like, for what? And I go, I, I'm doing the sheepskin brand and I think it, it lends itself to the Native Americans and um, can you can you come up with something creative? And he, he came back, his first name was Bear Claw and went to my IP attorney and he says, nah, it's registered. Oh, okay. And then the next name he came up was Bear Paw and uh, you know, it wasn't registered so we, we registered it right away. And uh, I said, hey Robert, uh, Every great brand needs a logo, so can you come up with a logo for us? And he, he came up with a paw, and um, it's been iconic for us, the, the, the paw logo, yeah, and yeah. it, it kind of took off. So we came up with the name Bear Paw, um, had to figure out, okay, how are we going to package it, how are we going to uh, make the design, the box, all that, and I was in Lake Tahoe over that, that weekend, and I was, I was just kind of soul searching, and I figured, okay, my first box will be the lake in the mountains. So that was our first box with hang tags and all that. So Monday came, I called Big Five up and I said, hey, um, I got it. It's, uh, it's gonna be called Bear Paw. Um, got a really killer box here. It's gonna be Lake Tahoe. Um, we've got hang tags, everything. Uh, what are you gonna sell it for? They asked me and I was like, well, I'll be very transparent. How about if uh, I mark them up like 15 to 20 percent? Would you guys be happy with that? They go, no, no problem. And uh, how many pairs do you have? I said, we have 50,000. And they said, oh, we'll take them all. <laughs> and that's how Bear Paw was created. Wow, yeah. And um, Had you bought them from China or had you not bought them yet? You no, no, I was just doing the factory okay. a favor. Right. Okay. And so, I, I mean, this was just like, wow. Uh, I got into it by sheer accident. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I remember after I delivered the product, a month goes by, I get a phone call, and you get that like anxiety of what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, oh God, did I blow this or what? And they said, hey, do you have any more? And I went, um, well, yeah, I can get more. And they go, uh, I go, what do you want? And they go, can you give me 100,000 pairs? Jeez. And I said, yeah. Well, I really didn't know at the time, but I said, yeah, anyway. Said, yeah. <laughs> and boom, it, it just started to snowball. Uh, the next customer was Shoe Pavilion, and then really hit the strides with when we hooked up with Famous Footwear. Um, you know, timing is a lot to do with, uh, with with opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity. So you you were a rep for various athletic shoe companies, yes. and then you made the, the plunge, if you will, into this business. So very entrepreneurial. I mean, was there trepidation on your part, or you? I mean, concern, what, what, what kind of thoughts will go through your head as you're going through all this? I've always been a risk taker and I've tried to make a very calculated risk on everything I do. Um, calculated risk, I think that's important. Yes, that is very important. Yeah. yeah. And when I mean risk taker, it's more of like an entrepreneurial. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And you know, um, Tom, sorry, we got, we got to go to commercial. We're going to take a commercial break. We're going to come back, we'll continue the conversation with Tom Romeo, the CEO and founder of Bear Paw Shoes. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers. So Jerry will give me hand signals when there's time, how much time's left. Yep. So I'll start like two minutes, one minute. So 
Oh, it's just start flashing things. That's all. Well, that's how you know when to go to get ready to go to commercial. Okay. So, so hopefully the people like it. Yeah. What's your audience? Fast. How many? Hard to say. They don't do an Arbitron. They don't subscribe to Arbitron, so we don't know how many listeners are there. Uh -huh. So Phil Cowan, you know, he's on from seven to eight on this station. So he's like the lead in, and then he goes over to another station from like two to nine. So yeah, Phil, probably, I remember. Yeah, Paul and Phil. Phil. So he probably takes most of his listeners with him to the other station from the eight to nine hour, but some may stick around and some may this. I've heard lots of people say they hear that they're commuting. So how's the reception? Pretty good, but it's you know, it's fairly local, so I don't know how much I don't know Bob and Grass Valley if you're gonna really get it out past maybe Dixon or something. I'm just not quite sure how how far the reach really is. Mm -hmm. So So I'm sure it's millions, that. but Yeah. I, I do. I get, I get people that talk about, you know, they enjoy the show and they enjoy the guest and I've, you know, I guess I've gotten feedback from people like that. We're back. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers on the Money 105.5. This is your host, Mark Bellows. I'm a tax principal CPA with Clifton Larson Allen, a national uh, CPA firm with offices throughout the U.S., including one in Roseville, where I reside. I uh, work on the tax side with businesses and their owners, strategy planning, that sort of thing. If you'd like to get a hold of me, 906 or mark.bellows at claconnect.com. Today we're talking with Tom Romeo, the CEO and founder of Bear Paw Shoes, which is based right here in Sacramento area, Citrus Sites. Citrus Sites, yes. Citrus Sites, so right in the Sac area. Uh, one, a very good size uh, shoe company that's growing and growing and continuing to grow. And so we're getting into Tom's story, a very fascinating story. And I got a, someone from Facebook Live said that they, uh, your shoes have been put to great use on Auburn's hiking trails. Comfortable <laughs> and solid construction. So, Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, my wife reminded me that our kids had bare paw shoes as they were growing up. Ah. So yeah, we, we've used your product before. And, Enjoyed it. So you're saying that um, we were talking about taking calculated risks and how you went from to start forming and, and running this company, having not run a company before. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So you, you guys, so you took off. You sold the fifty thousand. You got an order for hundred thousand more. So was that all during two thousand one, or did that roll into two thousand two? Uh, two thousand one, two thousand two. Okay. So the company just started growing from there. And is and what at what point did you step away from being the rep and step fully into being Bear Paw? Well, uh, about 2003, we hired uh, a, a group of sales reps, independent sales reps, and they had uh, a, a base of customers across the uh, country. Um, so I kind of took more of a, a role of the, the marketing of the brand. Okay. And um, at that time, I think my title might have been president. Um, you kind of do everything. Sure. At the sure. beginning. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I'd even <laughs> wash dishes. <laughs> yeah. I did all, a lot of different stuff. Um, so the reps uh, would go out to independent uh, retailers, chain stores, um, show the product. The excitement for sheepskin was getting more and more um, prevalent out there. Um, our brand was starting to, to take shape. Uh, we were getting more and more market share. Uh, so over the, well, the probably the next five years, we really positioned ourselves as the number two brand, and, and currently we are definitely in that uh, number two position right. and, and growing. Uh, uh, we like to be the affordable and sensible brand, and that's kind of our mantra. Gotcha. So at some point during that time frame, is that when you first went on QVC? Yeah, I think 2003 I went on QVC. Um, that was interesting. Um, was it actually you in front of the camera? Yeah, it was. I, I went in front of the camera. My my brother lives in uh, uh, the Philadelphia area where they're um, they're located in Chester, Chester, uh, PA, um, and you it, it, you learn a lot. I mean, it's, oh, you, sure. you 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 have to think on your feet, <laughs> and uh, it's it's all numbers, and oh, uh, yeah. it's uh, it's interesting to, to to see how you have to. Uh, adapt to what style selling, what style you're sold out of, and, and to push the other style, take the phone calls. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I did it a few times. So when you first started, the first time in San QVC, how many different styles did you have at that time? Uh, back then, probably about 10 styles. Okay. 
And how long are you on QVC to do that stuff? And by the way, we, you've, you've moved on over to the sister network, HS, HSN. HSN, yes. So we're you guys are over to the, yeah, HSN. But at the time, it was, it started QVC, so. It would be like maybe a half hour okay. episode, uh, maybe three, four styles of multiple colors. Okay. And you have numbers, do you have quotas you have to meet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you know, <coughs> sell or, or you don't say. Yeah. Do they buy it from you and then have you sell it for them effectively? Or do they not buy it from you and you, you sell it directly to whomever calls in them? Back then it was more uh, uh, you sell it, then they buy it. Nowadays it's they buy it and you help sell it. Oh, okay. Because you have so the internet, changed. you have a lot of different a uh, avenues that they can sell as well. Right, right, gotcha, gotcha. Huh. So uh, some, some screen time, some TV time, you probably get more comfortable doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it was uh, you know, you get nervous because sure, you're out yeah. there uh, live TV. Right. Uh, but uh, what I enjoyed the most was the customer interactions that I got with customers that uh, really love the brand. I mean, we have a cult following, and uh, it's just really interesting to sit and chat with people that love the brand as much as you do, and to, they have stories. It just it's it's enlightening to, to hear. Yeah. So you guys are based in Citrus Heights. Yes. Have you always been based there from the beginning? Uh, yeah. Okay. In the uh, same location. Uh, was a house uh, that I owned, and, and now it's a, um, um, a strip center that we've called Bear Paw Village. Okay. And so you guys, how long have you been there at Bear Paw Village? Uh, it was before Bear Paw. I've uh, it's been since 1996. Okay. Uh, so Romeo and Juliet is a parent company when I was doing uh, the LA gear and right. some other manufacturing, sales and manufacturing. And then uh, in 2001 when we began Bear Paw, that became our headquarters. Okay, gotcha. And so y you have some retail outlets? Yeah, we have uh, two retail outlets, one in Citrus Heights, which we're remodeling right now because we're remodeling the whole center uh, to give it that tall S feel. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have one in Reno. Okay, we had other locations over the years, or is it just these two? Uh, before Bear Pie, I had some retail stores okay. when I was a sales rep. Gotcha. And then also, of course, Flip Flop has what, 60 stores? Yeah, Flip Flop has 60 stores, mostly in malls and outlets. Throughout California or in other states as well? Uh, throughout uh, the U.S. Okay. and um, globally. What, what other countries? Uh, we have Spain, uh, the Caribbean, uh, Mexico. Uh, we're opening up Mexico right now. Uh, Canada, um, India, we're doing a big push in China right now. So, so what, what prompted you guys to expand and, and acquire Flip Flop? Well, we're a, a boot company, mm -hmm. uh, fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter and first, um, but predominantly winter. So fall and winter, that's, that's your... That's our mantra, that's who we are. And um, so the money, money all comes in then because of sales. Yeah, so and then you ramp up production in the spring and summer. Yeah, so when we first uh, started Bear Pie, I was like, okay, good, I like, you know, we're making some money on this. And then you go in the downtime and you're like, wow, I don't want to give it back. <laughs> yeah. So over time, you're like, what am I gonna do? I, you gotta have some counter seasonality here in right. this business. Right. So. Uh, when this idea was was brought to me back in February of, of of this year, actually we purchased it in June. Um, I was like, "Wow, you know, I'm not sure. I really want to get into retail. I'm not sure this makes sense." And then the more and more I thought about it, it was like, and I we have a great team. That's what makes Bear Pot so special is our team, and we have some great employees. Um, I included them on 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 the, on the talks, and it's like, guys, what do you think? I mean, we do really well for six months, and this brand does really well for the opposite six months. I think there's a marriage here. I think there's a synergy. Yeah, that sounds like it. And uh, I just started negotiating with the, the owners of it, Cherokee, and um, got to know the founder, Ryan Curran, who's a very interesting gentleman, how he came up with the, his concept. His concept's very interesting because it's all hanging. Everything in his store hangs. And people really? are like, well, really, could you hang bear pot? Well, yeah, we can hang our slippers. Uh, we do floor stack some of our boots. You'll see it. We're doing a big um, um, rollout in select stores uh, come this uh, holiday season mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to bear pot theme some of our flip-flop shops. That's going to be, uh, uh, 
we think can change the the foot clinic, footprint of, uh, of flip flop shops. You know, we, we look at the name and say, okay, flip flop shops. Does that mean just sandals and flip flops, right, or right. does that mean it's time to flip flop your shop? <laughs> yeah. And so we kind of play a little name game there. Okay, okay, I like that. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be interesting to see how that works out for you guys. Should be good. Um, so the seasonality is an issue, and so one of the things we, you and I talked a little bit about before we got on the air was um, one way that you guys have, in, and it's in your industry, is a very common way to, to fund this is using factoring. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that works for yeah. listeners? Yeah, factor, factoring is um, basically you sell your receivables to a uh, bank institution, financial institution. Um, they customer sees it as it's you it's still you mm -hmm. um, it goes to a lockbox the money and then uh, you get the money right away uh, at first people are like wow that that's expensive money but over the years it is it, it's as cheap as any bank and it gives you the flexibility to grow uh, during the time you need to grow instead of looking at an asset line and saying well I need to up my asset line in the middle of my season well I don't have to do that right it's it's whatever you can do, whatever you can sell, they buy your receivables. So they advance you on your receivables, however you want to call that. But um, for us, it's been very successful. We use uh, CIT, which is probably, if not the largest, they are one of the largest. I think they are the largest factoring institution right now okay. in the world. Okay. So CIT, you guys use that for your factoring, and that's really worked well for you. Yep, we use CIT for factoring, Bank of the West for our uh, operations. Um, we have a great relationship with Bank of the West, great bank, very, uh, you know, for business our size, they were right in their kill zone. Okay. So you guys sell through, because you have a couple retail outlets, certainly at Bearpaw, um, but you also sell through a lot of um, um, locate, uh, other big stores. So what are, where's, what are the top ones you guys uh, Our number one store is... Um, Famous Footwear, okay. uh, we do DSW, HSN of course, Dick Sporting Goods, um, Big Five, of course. they brought me to the table so they're still with us and they'll yeah. always be with us. Um, you know, we, we do a host of independent shops, boutiques, um, you know, on the internet world we're really large with Amazon, Zappos, uh, 6 p.m., uh, Hot Look, Zulily, um, HSN has a big internet arm. Um, it's interesting to see how things have transpired with the uh, internet and brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been a, um, a challenge for a lot of people that don't understand brick and mortar and don't understand the, um, the coexistence with in internet. And those who have understood it and succeeded and understood how to bring their customer to the brick and mortar and to the internet has made it very uh, successful for a lot of a lot of good retailers out there. Yeah, and there are a lot of, that are successful doing and have, have found a way to make it work. I mean, when you years ago you were oh it's a death of retail and everything's going to be ghost towns because people are only going to shop online and that's that's not true. No, no, there's it's a happy medium exactly. And so those that are successful have found the happy medium or are finding the happy medium. And yes. I think a lot of the companies that you guys um, sell your product through are examples of that. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you uh, you said that um, you work with Amazon and Zappos. So, how did you get involved with them? Um, Zappos came first. Uh, they're based in. They were a San Francisco-based company. They moved to uh, Las Vegas. Okay. Uh, sold them at both locations, um, but it was right when they were making the move. We. Um, I reached out to them, and our sales rep and I flew down to Vegas, and um, they're an interesting company. They have a culture, they have a, uh, a way of doing business that's very uplifting. Um, you you want to join the team, and, and, and I saw that right away. You walk into their lobby, uh, they have a popcorn machine okay. for everyone to have popcorn, and to whatever drinks you want. Um, they gave me and my uh, sales rep a flag, and I'm like, what is, what is this flag? Yep, we gotta take a quick okay. commercial break. When we come back, let's continue the conversation about uh, how you guys get into Zappos. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
What year was that? Oh boy, let me see. Probably four, two thousand four, maybe. I can't remember when they moved to, to Vegas. I think it was. Like I remember four. seeing a building one time outside Petaluma. Was that? Yeah, they they had a uh, their uh, warehouse. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. Their so distribution was right there. Never seen Apple One Hundred, I think, or something yeah. like that. Now. Okay. So, yeah, they're an interesting company. They're very. I mean. They're they're the first one that bucked the system because there was a, you can't sell shoes on the internet. Yeah. And then, okay. uh, it's a they didn't have any retail, right? Did they do any? Okay. No, they only they at the beginning they had a store in um, where was it? It was off the one hundred and one. It was in like um, north of Ukiah. Hmm. Okay. I can't remember the town where the the train is. You know the the, 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 the skunk train. The skunk right? train. Yeah, it was up over there. I can't remember the town, but they they had a they had a small. Uh, I remember the story they told me they uh, our head of product was fifth fifth in command at their company. Uh -huh. So it's, I I know a lot of the history because yeah. of him. He works yeah. for us, and uh, they they had to open a retail store to get all these brands because uh -huh. they no one thought the internet you could sell yeah. shoes. Yeah, and it was kind of a funny story, and uh, you know. Uh, we did, you know, another thing to talk about too, if we have time, is our charitable stuff. We yeah, do absolutely no, it's definitely good. We do, we do a lot of charity. Actually, I'm leaving here, going to uh, a big golf tournament for the foster kids. Oh, nice. We're one of the lead sponsors. Oh, good. Um, Sleep Train, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mattress Firm, and yeah. Bear Paw. You know, we do a boot to boot program with them. Cool. And last year, I think we donated seven thousand boots. To oh, nice. Where are you guys? Where's the tournament? It's in Cabadera. Oh, okay. So we, we go there and the kids will be there. It's it's, it's a cool thing. That's cool. Yeah. And we do a lot with them. We did Safetyville. Oh, and yeah, we yeah, invited yeah. out, I think it was like 300 foster kids. Nice. And we worked with all the local businesses. Um, we were, did a deal with Jam Sports for backpacks. Uh -huh. uh, we worked with Staples for supplies. Bakuni did the food. Uh, waste management helped with all the garbage. And uh, we had just a host of businesses come together, pg and E's mud. That's great. And we gave them a day at Safetyville. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, and now we're doing a big push with St. Jude. We give every kid in the hospital a slipper. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so March of Dimes. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, you, you, you get into business and you're thinking, oh, you, know, you wanna make money, and then you make money, you wanna give back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been I'm involved in um, United Several Policy. I've been on their board for a number of years, and then also the local chapter here. And then also um, used to be called Keep Raphael Memorial. Now it's Keaton's Child Care Child Cancer Alliance. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, two great, great building organizations. But same thing about being able to give back is just really important. Yeah. You know, I feel like. So does Zappos have in their own product, or is it all others? Uh, mostly their own. They do do some, we call that makeups, private label. Gotcha. When we're back, you listen to Beyond the Numbers on Money 1055. I'm your host, Mark Bellows of this weekly business talk show. Uh, Wednesday mornings, 8 to 9 o'clock. Uh, I bring in various business leaders from throughout uh, throughout the region, generally, although sometimes we go from outside the region, but throughout the region to talk about their, their story, their business, what they do, why they do it, that sort of thing. So I uh, uh, appreciate having our guests every week. And this week, my, my guest is Tom Romeo, the CEO and founder of Bear Paw Shoes. And so we were just talking about how, in, let me say around 2004, you guys met with Zappos. Yes. Um, so like I was saying before, uh, they have a lobby and, and the, the popcorn machine and, and, and vending machines for everybody. And they don't let you spend any money, <laughs> uh, even their cafeteria. They, you just walk and eat whatever you want. Right. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so they gave me this flag, my, my rep and I, Bill, Bill Miller. 
And I was like, well, what's this flag for? And they go, well, we're going to give you a tour. And that tells everybody, you're a new vendor. So I was like, okay, and, all right, so I'm going to get teas, I'm going to get this. And they walk you through their whole company from, from uh, top to bottom. Right. Uh, to Tony, the C CEO. Uh, and then you end your walk um, with, I, I don't remember his name, but I called him Dr. Phil. <laughs> And they put you on this big throne with the flag, and they take pictures with you, right, right. instant the old instamatic cameras, oh, yeah. and they do that. And uh, then the buying team and you are just chatting in this office, and you're in this big throne. Think about this big king's chair. And uh, they go, why do you want to sell uh, Zappos? I said, well, simple. What is your return rate? And they said, uh, about 30%. I go, if... I could cut that in half with our brand. Would you buy Bear Paw? Mm. And they said, most certainly. I said, I guarantee you, we're going to cut that to 15%. Um, they, how, do you, how do you know that you're going to cut it? They asked me. And I was like, well, we're full sizes. You're used to selling halves and fulls, and we're full. The, and most people understand what their full size is. You know, if it's... if, if, if if you're a seven and a half, we'd probably tell you to go to an eight. If you're a seven, stay at seven. Right. Um, and we could teach the customer how to do that. And they go, well, that's a good idea. You know, let's, let's give it a shot. And uh, our return rate was, uh, I think it was 11.5 wow. the first year. And they, they said, I, I'm, I like your brand. I like, where, I like how your attitude is. And it started a, a great partnership with Zappos. Uh, um, and you know, then then we moved on to Amazon. Um, you know, back two thousand and four. I can't remember when we started with Amazon. And um, I'll, I'll never forget the buyer. He's like, uh, "We want you to write the order." And I remember uh, the same rep, Bill, Bill and I. And I was like, "Cause it wasn't too many of us back then." Right. And uh, I said, "We well, write the order." Wow, that's that's a different way of thinking about business. And um, we wrote the order and. Uh, we submitted it, and the buyer goes, uh, "Not enough." <laughs> and we wrote it again. And he goes, "Not enough." And I go, "Time out." His name was John. I go, "John, there must be something you are thinking that we're not thinking. So help us a little bit." He goes, "We at Amazon are very good at analytics and formulas. That's what we do, and we put." a brand's desire into our formula and analytics and it punches out a uh, yeah a buy right i said well then i'm guessing why don't you <laughs> give it to me <laughs> yeah and uh well we wanted to see you know how you would do and i was like well we're not doing good at that because <laughs> we're not giving you enough yeah, yeah. And, and, and and so they did the numbers it came back and it came out to three hundred thousand pairs wow. and i was like holy, that's way too much. And they go, no, 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 no. We, we did the analytics. We know this. And uh, so we said, okay, we'll make you 300,000 pairs if that's what you like. And this was 2004. Yeah, 2004-ish, five-ish, I can't remember yeah, exactly. Yeah. It gets a little fuzzy. But um, they bought them on. They blew them out. And I was like, wow, the Internet's interesting. Mm. Uh, and Zappos blew them out. I was like, this is a new world we live in. Mm -hmm. So I went on uh, kind of a, a, a preacher's tour to all my accounts. And I said, guys, the internet, it's, it's the way of the future. You need to understand that it is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. So I really went to a lot of the brick and mortars. I, uh, Debbie Ferreira, the, the, the uh, CEO of, of uh, DSW, I, went, I said, hey, you gotta have that. We went to dinner, we talked about it. I said, you gotta have the internet. Um, and when, I, I imagine some some in some situations you're met with resistance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you get resistance Again, all you, the time. You mentioned what, what people are called Zappos, and no one will buy the shoes. People will buy shoes over the internet. Oh no, they they they, they what internet? No, no. They no, have to try them on to make sure. Yeah, they got to right. fit. They got to do this. Uh, so no one was a believer on it, but I became a believer because I saw what uh, the success we've had with two of the largest internet, you know, shoe uh, retailers. And so I went to a lot of it, the famous footwear, I went to them, and uh, Rogosik, the president, is like, okay, I get you, I get you. I mean, the, the DSW and, and, and um, 
famous but were the first that really embraced our internet business, brick and mortar and internet. Right. And they understood the happy medium. They understood how they had to communicate. And, and, and more importantly, it's loyalty programs that you, you have them coming into your store, but now let's get them coming to your website and let's interact with them. Let's, let's, let's have better synergy with, with our two retailer fronts. And, and it started to just blossom with these guys. Macy's has a great internet side. Um, and that's when I realized, wow, brick and mortar is never going away. It's always here. But those who can figure out how to bring the happy medium between brick and mortar and internet will succeed. And famous footwear, DSW, Macy's, uh, you know, Macy's had some, some hiccups, uh, just the retail world in general. Uh, but most of them have, have done well for themselves by introducing internet and, and coming to that happy medium and doing well with it. So, um, you know, I rapidly realized that we were an internet darling mm -hmm. back early. Right. And that really helped our awareness. Because that's the great thing of the internet. It brings everybody globally to the same page. Right, right. It's an internet to provide location. Yeah. Physical location, that is. So you guys started out with Bear Paw Shoes, but you've really grown into a lot of different companies, a lot of different things. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit about some of the things you guys are doing there. Yep, um, we uh, own some other businesses, uh, flip-flop shops, which we talked about. Uh, we have Bear Paw Equities, which is a um, real estate arm, development arm of our, co uh, our company. And uh, we have projects, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, projects with the city of Citrus Heights right now. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Boyd's a friend of mine, the uh, city manager, and we're working to revitalize the Auburn uh, <coughs> corridor from where Auburn uh, meets uh, 80 right. all the way to Greenback. Uh, we have seven properties on that uh, corridor, and we're going to hopefully revitalize that and uh, you know bring it back to uh, you know its, it's pr pride and glory. Right, right. So you've got that. Um, where do you guys manufacture the shoes at? We manufacture them in China, um, and also we have uh, factories in Mexico, Spain, uh, Vietnam, um, can't remember, there's another country in uh, Malaysia or South Asia, I mean, uh, uh, Miramar, I think it is. Um, uh, but that, we'll see what happens with our government. Do you have any here in the U.S.? No, no, 95% of it is China, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, with all the rhetoric that's going on right now, you kind of have to like do your job, but then also listen to this, and yeah. you know, hopefully we're going to calm down these talks uh, soon. Because hopefully it's just a little posture on each side to try to yep. establish, you know, yeah, where they stand, it's, it's, and then kind of work it out. I, I'm hoping that's the case, yes. uh, and I think that would be because that's kind of where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, we've done a lot of business with that country, China, and. Um, I don't think the U.S. Uh, consumer is ready to pay the prices of I would outside. Agree. I would, I would absolutely agree. So it would be a significant increase. Oh, it would be probably 20, 25, 30 percent increase. Yeah, well, I've, I've heard some other, numerous others say that the prices in China, the cost of doing business in China has been going up slowly. There's yeah, it more definitely. More middle class and, and kind of wage increases and that sort of thing. Have you experienced that as well? Yeah, I've been there since 1994. Yeah. Uh, I just got back from China and our company, we have a company there called ZBT, mm -hmm. uh, Zhangzhou Boom Trading Company, naturally ZBT. Of course, yeah. Um, and um, uh, we have 40 employees over there. You've really seen the change from, from the, the haves and the have-nots uh -huh. to now that there's a middle class out there, yes. and that's helping their economy uh, oh, yeah. uh, immensely. Uh, buildings, you see, you know, all the steel they buy, everything they buy. Right, 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 yeah. So you can see the growth. Yeah, yeah. It's all the stuff that would be potentially subject to tariffs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of them are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we are going to take a break here, and we'll, we'll get, when we get back, we'll finish the conversation. We're talking to Tom Romeo, Bear Paw Shoes. If you want to get on with Tom, it's Tom at BearPawShoes.com. And you can also call their uh, corporate headquarters, 916-726-4413. We'll be right back. Yeah, that. Just that. Oh, so the, uh, that's a show in itself. Uh, the tariffs and the Trump yeah. and all that. It's just, uh, it's, as a tax guy, you probably 
see uh, you know a lot of this. There, there's a lot of good, but um, like I said, I think I think it's a lot of posturing to try to. You know, it's politics, right? It, it, it's uh, it's just politics at its best. Yeah. And and I got to give Trump some you know kudos. He's 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 a tough negotiator. Oh, absolutely. He's a very tough. I mean, you can have your differences. You can think whatever you want to think about him. It's not going to be an easy negotiation. Though. No, it's not. And and it it, it, it actually it has to be. I've seen it so much that mm -hmm. you know the, the the Chinese government, they'll for the longest time they they oh, don't back on. This is short one. Okay. We're back. You listen to Beyond the Numbers on Monday, 1055 FM, a weekly business talk show. My, I'm the host, Mark Fellows. I'm a tax accountant, a CPA, and a principal with Clifton Larson Allen with offices, uh, firm with offices throughout the U.S. I'm in the Roseville office. I'm a tax planner, strategy, uh, that sort of thing. Work with businesses and their owners and uh, focus mainly on manufacturing, distribution, real estate, investment, development, and con construction, so contractors. So if you, uh, if you have any tax questions, concerns, want to talk about things, maybe talk about the impact of the new tax law, that sort of thing, uh, you can get a hold of me at 916-784-7800 or mark.bellows at claconnect.com. Today we're talking with Tom Romeo, the CEO and founder of Bear Paw Shoes, based right here in in uh, the Sacramento area, it's just heights, but uh, they have numerous businesses that we were talking about before we went off, uh, off for commercial. Uh, and it, you guys have locations in Canada and Europe as well. Yes, we have uh, Bear Paw Canada. Uh, we have Warehouse and uh, BC uh, outside of Vancouver uh, that handles all our um, sales in Canada. We have, I think, six or seven sales reps there. It's been growing uh, steadily. I think it's our third year. It's probably our fastest growing segment. Right. Um, I think the market's perfect. <laughs> Yeah. They, they have some long winters. I was going to say, their, their time is maybe a little bit longer than here in the U.S. for yeah. the season. Yeah, and then we have uh, Bear Paw Ch um, Europe. Uh, it's a venture we started in 17. We have a DC in uh, the Netherlands. Um, our VP of Sales, uh, Kevin McDonald, is traveling back today mm -hmm. from uh, two weeks over in Europe. Um, and uh, uh, we we were really excited about that because... Um, it gives us some opportunities to open countries that uh, we've always wanted to be in. And um, sometimes when you're uh, an American-based company and you, you ship from here or ship from China, th there's some uh, um, anxiousness that, uh, do I really want to take that gamble and do it? But by having your own DC there, it, it allows for uh, ease of product. And, and now that there's a free movement within the EU, mm -hmm. uh, I look at the Europe as the United States and, and the countries as states. Right, <laughs> right. That's yeah. almost how you have to look yeah, at it. Exactly. And so now they have movement all over Europe. Um, and it allows us to have <coughs> distribution so much easier through there. Right. And so that, that will probably be one of our largest uh, um, growth models will be probably in our European company. Great. And um, we've had some uh, manufacturing in Spain that we're doing for some of our European customers, which has been very successful. We're looking at um, Romania, Turkey to manufacture as well. So there's a lot of opportunity once you establish a brand in Europe. Right, right. And D DC for our listeners being distribution center. Distribution center, yeah. yes. yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it's acronyms, right? We, um, we get used to them. But yeah, it's important to have, I mean, it's, it's good to have a place to come out of and then do you do you find that uh, that the if you will the Europeans are more comfortable dealing with you once you've got a presence there? Oh yes, when, when you have your own company there, they know you're legit. You're going to be there for the long haul. Right. That you're putting your money where your mouth is. The products there on the on the ground. That's that's key. Um, interesting about like Canada and Europe, how far they are behind the U.S. when it comes to internet. Hmm. Um, Germany is probably the most aggressive and, and the, the most, I would say, closest to the U.S. model. But the other countries are still far behind. And I always tell our, our team over in Europe, I go, hey, it's like having a crystal ball. 
we know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. We know it. Yeah. So let's do it. So we've been doing a really big push for internet business, uh, drop ship, which what I mean by drop ship, we do a large drop ship business here in the US, which means you get on the website of a, a retailer like Macy's and um, they'll carry the majority of your line. Right. Um, they'll have what they have in the store mm -hmm. and that's like maybe 20% of your line and then the rest will be on the internet. We drop ship, we actually ship that to the consumer directly. You used to use a Macy's label? Uh, yeah, we, they, they furnish the sure, label, sure. they furnish their hang, their hang tags, their tickets, whatever they need. Right. We have 20 some, I think 20 to 25 of those dropship customers okay. in the US. And now I think we have five or six in Europe and, and, and about the same in Canada. But the Europeans, Germany especially, has just embraced it and like, okay, yeah, if you got the inventory, we're gonna sell. So it's 24 seven, mm -hmm. you're selling constantly. You wake up in the morning and you get a pick ticket of all the stuff you sold yeah. and then you ship it to the consumer and you bill the customer. It's the way of the future. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you just gotta look at the, you know, we're all a, a, a distribution and logistic company. Our brand is footwear, but we have to understand we're a logistic company. Wear, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a smart thing for you guys to have figured out, I think. And I, don't, I think there are others in similar spaces yours that haven't figured it out totally, and they still try to be a clothing company or that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's gonna put you guys ahead, I would think, ahead of the curve on that. Uh, yeah, you just gotta be really uh, open-minded and uh, watch. I, I'm a very good watcher. I watch things and I say, okay, maybe we should look into that. And, and then you always look at, I call them the big brother, big sister, and see what they're doing. Yeah. Amazon, sure. Zappos. See what they're doing on the internet, and then do it. Right. And it, it, it's it's the goal is how to get product from A to B as quickly and as cheaply as possible. Sure. Sure. And that's what we try to do, and that's what we're going to do globally with all our DCs. Is we're going to figure out a way to get it to our consumers quickly. Because as I said earlier, the internet has brought the whole world together. Absolutely. So you guys have a, a very uh, as well as a charitable. Event, if you will, you have definitely believe in charities and believe in giving back to the community. You want to talk a little bit about what you guys do and what you're involved in? Yes, we, we have a, a big charity arm that I'm very proud of, and all the employees uh, are, are involved in it. We have a charitable committee, which uh, uh, the executive team can't be on, and they select the charities. Um, we have two charities that we, we kind of stay tried and true with. Um, it's the foster kids. Mm -hmm. um, Dale Carlson's a dear friend of mine. I actually leave today after the the radio interview, and I go to their um, uh, golf event, charity event uh, at Catamadera, and all the kids will be, a lot of the kids will be there, and um, it's just so heartwarming. Um, I met Daryl uh, Dale. I mean, um, uh, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago. I can't remember exactly at a function um, that a buddy of mine says, you gotta go to this um, charity event uh, at uh, Granite Bay Country Club, Granite Bay Golf Club, which I'm a member and I live right there in Granite Bay. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, my son's got a travel ball, baseball game, I'm gonna, I'll do my best to get there. And um, I was late, but I, I made it, my wife and I made it. And um, it was for foster kids. And I'm sitting there listening to all the stories and everything, and it was a gala. It was a masquerade gala, and I, uh, and and I, I'm pretty much an outgoing person, and I introduced myself to everybody at the table. And the guy sitting to the left um, was Dale Carlson, and um, I said, uh, I think I'm the man that you wanted to meet, hmm. and I think karma brought us together. Right. And he goes, What do you mean? He goes, My name's Tom Romeo. I'm the owner of Bear Paw Shoes. That started a conversation that lasted way into the evening. He was emailing me at night, he was this and that, and we just had a bond. And this was in October. And I said, let's try to make the magic happen quickly. And my team, our team, because we have an amazing team, marketing team, Edna and uh, JP, our president, who's amazing, mm -hmm. John Pierce, uh, we all got together and we came up with uh, our boot for boot program. So what that is, is every Thanksgiving, from Thanksgiving till um, a little before Christmas, 
every boot that's sold on bearpod.com, a boot is given free. We donate a boot. Uh, last year, I think we donated uh, almost 7,000 pairs. Wow. And uh, they go to all their uh, DCs that they have across the country. Mm -hmm. They wrap them up and they are uh, gifted to all the kids. They get their sizes. We try to get as close to the, you know, the styles they want, the sizes sure, they sure. want, and they, it's under the Christmas tree for them. Um, and, and some of the, you, you do, you give because you, you care. Yeah. But some of the things I've received over the years from giving is amazing. Uh, the letters, the, the heartfelt, uh, just this one girl sent me a, a, a handwritten letter, and she said, "You," she goes, "Mr. Romeo, you made my Christmas. I come from a broken family. I, I don't know um, what path to take. I've been into drugs. I've been into this and into the foster program, and I now know there are good people out there. You made my Christmas." And the, the, these stories I hear are just amazing. So it just propelled us. We now do a St. Jude uh, uh, give back. Okay. Every every kid in the St. Jude hospital gets a bear paw slipper. Mm -hmm. So uh, you walk around the hospital, JP, John Pierce, our president, just got back from their tour and he handed out uh, slippers to every uh, child. Oh, and and um, you'll, you'll see it on our website, uh, bearpaw.com. You'll see it in our, our catalogs that we sell all our, our charitable events that we do as, as a company. And, um, you know, we, we do it because we care. We truly care about our consumer, and we consider, we care about the people that, that make Bear Paw what it is. Well, that's great, Tom. Very inspiring. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, and thank you for being on the show today. We've been talking with Tom Romeo, the founder and CEO of Bear Paw Shoes. You can get an email him at tom at bearpawshoes.com. And now with the acquisition of Flip Flop Shops, you guys just continue to grow and you're a very successful company. I'm so pleased to have had you on the show today. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. I All right, everyone. Everyone enjoyed it. Thanks, and tune in next week. We'll see you then. Take care.